Okay, this is the second bonus video that we're going to cover, and it's all about your ePortfolio. Now, Linda's already mentioned that ePortfolios are important. You'll have to complete one as part of your degree or part of your course. But the most important reason of why you're going to do your ePortfolio is so you can get a job. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Your ePortfolio is your professional face and of what you do. It's a, something you can distribute really easily. People can check on you. People can pass on your ePortfolio to other potential employers, and hopefully you'll, you you can get buy yourself a job just by investing the time in your ePortfolio. So, what we're going to be doing this year is you've got your IST integration workshops with which with your discussion boards. I'm expecting that you'll have them finished before you do your first prac. The reason being that the tools that you've got that you're going to be learning in those discussion boards and in those workshops will benefit when you're on prac. So many students last year said, wish I had done it before I went on prac instead of after. So you're going to complete your discussion, your IST workshops and all your lab sequences before prac. IST integration task is all related to this. Once you've finished though, I'm going to be assessing this and look giving you an actual standard uh, e-certificate. In the second semester, you'll be working on your uh, IST integration workshops towards your e-portfolio um, for your professional side, your second uh, practicum and then your final polished piece. Now, the reason why we're getting you to do an e-portfolio is so you can actually reflect on the teaching you're doing, not just your IST integration task, but also what you're doing in schools, what you're doing in learning, what you're doing in all your other subjects. The DEX is suggesting uh, in all their training to use Google Sites. However, they say you can use whatever you want and nothing's been written down that is definite um, and, and enforced. Weebly was one that was cons considered to be very useful for students last year. Mahara is another one. Pebblepad, there is so many that we could list. Um, it's quite, it's amazing. And uh, I, the one I'm gonna do is I have created a Google Sites template which you can download and run. If you learn how to do it in Google Sites, you can transfer it over to any site you want to start with. If you're comfortable doing web building and website design, then use whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you won't be begrudged for that. Um, now, what do you have in a teaching portfolio? A teaching portfolio is a description of your uh, philosophy and goals. It contains all your content that you want to collect, um, and it gives you a, a way of evaluating other people's teaching. Um, it also demonstrates your skills, not just your, your teaching skills, but your documenting, evaluation um, of yourself and by peers, and also your strategic planning. Now, I am constructing, uh, I've got, got a LAMS uh, a document here, which I've discussed before, and you can see here that this is stipulated by Atzel. This is a suggestion of what you're going to be doing, and this is your own comment. Now, I will supply this document uh, at the same time as, as you're doing this slam sequence and this document will give you a ability to um, keep a track of everything you're doing. Uh, once you've finished it all and we've assessed it, you'll be given, given a, a National Professional Standards for Teachers e-certificate. I'll switch over to that at the moment. Okay, so this is the document that you receive. So anytime you're writing stuff into LAMS, I would suggest that you copy and paste this here. You may lose your stuff in LAMS. It hasn't happened yet uh, for 600 students, but in the event that it does happen, you wanna make sure you've got your own copy. Uh, so keep a copy of this. You're gonna be transferring it to your uh, spreadsheet, uh, your e-portfolio anyway. When you're finished, and as I'm going through and marking all your different things, you will get a certificate like this at the end. Now, I'm gonna skip past this bit first. This is giving a breakdown, basically your star rating for each of your ATSL standards. Uh, star ratings we, we discussed in the first video. Uh, so here you can see this person, it's actually me, uh, has got four and five stars for all these things. If you get three stars for everything, all right, so three stars minimum, um, then you are considered to ha be graduate proficiency. If you're starting to get some four stars and five stars, you move up to highly accomplished, knowledge and understanding. All right, you can see down here. Uh, and if you get all five stars, basically, uh, you are highly, highly accomplished. Sorry, four stars is proficient. Now, e-portfolios. The possible e-portfolios that you can use is Google Sites, uh, or, or if you look up, there's lots of website providers, Do you Buzz, uh, Weebly, Showed, 
Uh, if I go over here, I've got even more um, bloggers, uh, webs, Weebly, WordPress, Wix. So there's lots and lots of website builders you can do. Um, Google Apps uh, or Google Sites is good because you can embed your Google Documents, your um, your uh, the websites itself, and lots of other features into it. Now, what I'm suggesting you do to start off with is you're going to go to Google Sites. If you have a Gmail account, and you can see here I'm already logged into Google, and it will say sign in here. If you don't have a Gmail account, you're going to have to create one, uh, or you're going to have to create an account. Uh, the So you have to log in here. It's the same as if you went to Weebly, you have to create an account. If you go to uh, Snap Pages, Webnode, you have to create an account. So now that I'm logged in as myself, so Jared up here, I want to create my web page. So I go uh, create. I then can. I'm then going to go to browse, and I want you to type in uh, under browse Australian student teacher Australian student teacher e-portfolio I've done that right and you'll come up with this one that looks green if you click on that you're basically you're saying I want to use this template and we'll go over this in a second so I'll go select from there I, you name your site now this has to be a professional thing so if I'm going to I'm going to go uh, Jared Johnson now down here it will say it's going to check to see if the website already exists I have to type in down here W A N L L O. Okay, and I'll go create. Now, it's saying here, the location is chosen to not available. That's because I've already made one with Jared Johnson. So I might have to put, say Jared Johnson ePortfolio or J Johnson or whatever. You have to find a name that's gonna fit. You can use characters, which makes it easier. Now, I'm not gonna hit create because I've already made one. I'm gonna go cancel, and I'm gonna go back to, if we just select the, the one that we've built, this is what it's gonna look like. So we've set this one up for you already. Um, I, I'm in edit mode up the top so you can see this but this is setting up an ePortfolio and I've given you all the information so here I've got a picture replace this with a picture of yourself all right so if I want to do that I go up here to edit all right, and I can just highlight that and delete all right I can then go insert so now it's just imagine you're doing a word document insert image and I choose I can either upload or choose and go okay and I get my image back that's a bit large so I'll put it back there okay save now you can put in your own image I have suggested all the different things that I want you to do so here you write brief sentences about yourself what type of teacher are you put in information okay across here is our standards all right so if I go to I've go to standards and first of all I'll put in my e certificate just so that way people can see that I'm, I'm good if I go to standard though, I've got all this stuff here. So here's the content, here's the graduate descriptor, here's the ICT elaboration, and then I want to put in my link to my evidence. So if I click on this bit, where it's blank, I'll say, uh, uh, I might be, um, Edmodo uh, can be used as a learning tool for students. Save. Now the purpose of me doing this is just so you can see, I can take, put that in here. I could use this as a, uh, a link instead, um, so I can customize this list. And this one, instead of being text, I could say this is a URL or a link. Okay, I'll go save. So now, when I go to put in here, I can put in a web address or a link or a, a link to a document or so on that's up to you um, it's, it's your own as we said it's, it's, it's your own document reflective practice is where you're going to keep posting all right so this is a, a new post and I'm going to put in here um, working with student teachers this is basically a blog now uh, I am conducting lectures well, if I go add files I can then choose any folder that, that I want, or I can just go down to save. Okay, and now that goes in my reflective practice. So I click on reflective practice, you can now see what I've written. All right, so this is your blog which continues on. Professional development, 
um, this is where I can just paste in same as the other list anything I do so any lectures you go to if you really want any professional development you do along the way so on professional learning now I've actually I've used this and have embedded an ePortfolio into this this is an ePortfolio playlist that I've already created in um, uh, my YouTube channel so that you can go through and watch that there's a whole heap of videos in here um, which you can watch and they're all about how to use an ePortfolio. I've also got last year's uh, ICT integration videos all in here which you can play and in here I've got a Scooper account. Now once you've set up your ePortfolio, you may watch these videos, you probably want to delete them and have it linked to your own stuff. Uh, and evidence is basically any documents you want to add. Um, you can just add files, add links, add from Google Drive. It's better to put your stuff in Google Drive rather than here because you've only got 100 meg. All right, and then, and then professional experience is that I was asked to add this, so this is where you can put in links to your CV or whatever. All right, so this is my ePortfolio, and if you get, once you've got in here, if you get stuck, go to Professional Learning Network and watch the other videos. That will help you to understand what's going on. Okay, now, going to go into why we do this now so here you've got uh, the three the red triangle we've been discussing your ePortfolio is the central part so you need to demonstrate your knowledge and understanding for ATSL you need to have evidence of what you've been doing and you need to have reflective practice all three of these parts make up the ePortfolio and are important okay so the first one is the ATSL standards which you'll be doing with me in LAMPS all this stuff the reflection is basically just take what you've done and paste it into your ePortfolio. Your evidence is all the stuff you're going to be collecting along the way. So anytime you go to a lecture, you come up with a good idea or you've found something that's important, paste it into your evidence. And your reflection is stuff that you're going to be working on daily, weekly, whatever. Um, any self-assessment, any peer assessment, anything you think is going to enhance what you're doing. So this is the overview of what you're going to do. So your ATSL standards you, you're going to do with me evidence you're going to do, uh, be collecting all the way, and that this is what is the stuff that you're reflecting on the time. This will probably won't change. Once you've got it set up, it won't change. Your evidence you'll add to as you need to. Reflective practice is stuff that you're going to be doing all the time. All this uh, initial stuff, you probably won't do either. Okay. Now, the... Okay. Your ePortfolio feedback, which Linda's gone through, is going to be a Google document, which will look something like this. We'll put in our ideas, whether or not we think it's professional. This is a good first impression. I want to read more. That's really important. If you do, if that's not ticked, then it's boring and it's unlikely you're going to get a job. You want someone who looks at your work to within five seconds or ten seconds say, I want to read more. They might not say, I want to give you a job, but they might say, I want to read more to, get, to work out whether or not I like it. Uh, from these standards, um, a lot of that will come from the work you do with me in, in the LAMS document, but you also are looking at interpretation of the actual standards. The next part is your reflection, so this is in your blog. If you're not reflecting upon all the different standards, then you're going to be missing out on some of these some of these points. And at the end is the lasting impression. Once I've finished looking at your ePortfolio, am I happy with it? Do I want to ring you up? Do I want you to get in for an interview? Or am I going, hmm, I found it too hard to navigate, uh, I didn't understand what they were talking about. Um, there was no ongoing professional practice, so no, don't worry about this person. Your ePortfolio is your basically foot in the door. And then at the end is, good, yes, good luck with teaching. You want to see that. Right? that basically, we're saying, yes, you, you've, you've done everything we can help you with. Move on. If we say, no, you'll need to revise and resubmit, at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you don't, res if you don't revise it and don't resubmit it, then we can't give you any more feedback. If you just take what you've made and go away and try and get a job, and you get a job, excellent. And if you're finding it difficult to get a job because your ePortfolio is poor, perhaps you should listen to what we say. Uh, 